everyone, I'm Susie Carrington, this is Alex Carrington, and we're the co-founders of Carrington's Coffee Co. here in Carnforth. In this episode of the Fielding the Bowl podcast, we spoke to Gaz, the owner of the Crossing Micropub in Hest Bank. If you want to find out more about Gaz, you can head to Facebook or Instagram and follow them, the Crossing Micropub. We hope you enjoy this episode. It was a really heartfelt conversation, um, and yeah, please enjoy. We're in the roastery and we're doing a podcast and we haven't actually done one of these for quite a while where we just talk and yeah. talk about where we're at and where we're going and what's happening. Yeah, so where we're at right now is Carrington's Coffee Co HQ, the roastery that's in Carnforth. Yeah, yeah. And we've been here for a year and a half, two years. Yeah. Is it two years already? Yeah, nearly two years since we got the keys. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that time's going by quickly, but also feels like it's, <laughs> don't know, feels like we've done a lot in that time. So. Introductions, yeah. podcasts. When we originally started these, they weren't really podcasts. We were actually using them to create a transcript of an interview that we were doing for our Fueling the Bold campaign. Yeah, yeah. It was just me with a few questions that I wanted to ask each individual to find out a bit about why they do what they do, what motivates them, what inspires them, what keeps them going. And we found out some really interesting and quite heartfelt things from each individual. And I think the, the most kind of pulling at the heartstrings one was actually our conversation with Gaz from The Crossing, um, the micro pub in Hesbank. Yeah, so we really, really wanted to use it as a podcast. Yeah. People we're asking for it, so here it is. Yeah, so we're going to press play and then we're going to listen to it because actually this is the first time that I've listened to it back. I haven't heard it. Yeah, in fact, just before you get into Gaz, a bit of background about this is Carrington's HQ, but what about us? Yeah, so Alex and I have the roastery here in Carnforth. Yep. We did have it open to the public um, last year and it was great. Lots of people were coming to pick up their beans, <laughs> come and try the coffee before they bought it. However, it just didn't work as a full-time open shop cafe. Yep. So in the last few months, we've been actively looking for somewhere to open as a extension of Carrington's Coffee, somewhere with high footfall where we can have a pickup shop where people can order online and pick up in store, yep. or they can just pop in and grab a coffee to go. Um, and we found somewhere, and drum roll. <laughs> it might be opposite Gaz. <laughs> yeah, it's in Hess Bank, and uh, we're very excited. And yeah, we'll give you some more information on that as time goes on. So yeah. press play. Press play, back to Okay, the well I'm Gareth Weimer. I'm the director and owner of the Crossing Market Pub, as we sat in the window overlooking our beautiful bay, and that's what I do. Yeah. And that's me. Yeah. So how did you actually first become interested in this profession? I'm originally from Stoke-on-Trent, mm -hmm. which always gets a new from the backs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It does but sound like I moved like 26 Robert, years ago, mm -hmm. and I've run various pubs for other people right. all around the bay. Mm -hmm. So the Globe and Overton was my first destination. Okay. Then the Hess Bank Hotel, just up the road for 10 years. Uh, and then I moved to Sunny Arnside, which is on the Kent oh, Estuary. I love Arnside. For nine years. And then decided an ex colleague of mine owned this building. Him and his family moved to Perth, and uh, it was failing all the time as a cafe. I just said, mm -hmm. what, what, what do you want for failing it? Failing as a cafe. Basically. <laughs> and the deal was done with a couple of weeks, but it, it didn't stop there. Yeah. It wasn't that easy. Because um, we had to get the walls soundproofed and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, must yeah. so Understand. much to do. You know yourselves, yeah. we're, we're not that kind of place anyway. <laughs> and then the, the, Larry, biggest one, the biggest challenge was Network Rail. They didn't want drinkers next to the line? Yeah. So. <laughs> and I get it. But guess that. they soon came round <laughs> to, to the idea that what we do is How what, did it convince what we them? <laughs> um, we serve beer. We're not your normal kind of run of the stream pub. You know, we don't do Sky Sports, Fruit Machines, music. We don't even let kids in. <laughs> so, you know, it's, we do dogs. But that's, that's where we are. Yeah, I just wanted to pause it there. Yeah. Our first experience of moving into, moving into Hesbank yeah. was this place, no music, yeah. dogs allowed, yeah. no children, no water. <laughs> yeah, no soft drink. No, they did have soft drinks. But amazing <laughs> atmosphere. Um, I remember pint on the house on my first time in there, welcome to the community. Yeah. And just as far as first impressions go, it's, it, it has instantly had, had me hooked, had us hooked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we go. But yeah, it was a right battle. And we had to go to Lancaster City Hall. Really? And face 12 councillors. It's like Dragon's Den or something. It was a bit of a day. <laughs> and, and it, you know, it, it got passed. Yeah. And that was it. 
And then the work started. Did you have to do a lot to get it to this level? We, yeah, hell of a lot, yeah. <laughs> because basically when it was a cafe, the kitchen was in the back room there. We didn't have a cellar, so we had to build a cellar. But we had two rooms downstairs that were ideal for the temperature of the beers we yeah. needed. They were pastry rooms when it was a cafe, because mm. when you deal with pastry, it needs to be cold environment. Mm, yeah. And so it worked that way. There's a bit of damp down there, but that's ideal. Yeah. Absolutely ideal. That's a good thing. You need a damp basement for your beer. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. The only thing we couldn't do is when we get a beer delivery, mm-hmm. they have to come through that door down the stairs and then they're not we've seen them shoved. delivering the beer every time yeah. <laughs> to be fair mm-hmm. heaving it down you know, the stairs you know we'd probably get about 25 beers a week here. Mm-hmm. yeah and like that sounds like quite a lot well we could have had something outside but again it, it, it's stirring up the planning apart from that it, it works yes we opened officially mm-hmm. the 22nd of march 2017 but yeah it was a, it was tough because people think it's related to the railway it, ah. it never has been yeah. ever we themed it to be mm-hmm. related to theme. the railway. Just a, 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 across from you, you can see Station House there. That was where the original station was. Yeah. 1965, derailment, mm-hmm. Glasgow overnight to, to London, Euston, came off right outside here, mm-hmm. and it never reopened. Mm-hmm. And it a, never will. Yeah, never going to be a station I mean, here ever again. No, which is a real shame because... It is a shame, it'd be so convenient. I'd be, I'd be retired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just to explain exactly where the crossing is yeah, in so, relation to the train and the shore and the... Yeah, so as you, well, as you pass from Morecambe through to Bottom of Sands and Carnforth, you go through the village of Hesbank. Yeah. And there's a crossing, a level crossing there. And right on the corner of the level crossing is the, the crossing. crossing. I mean, that's why they obviously why they called it that. But it's the closest point where the train line meets the uh, shore. Yeah. And the, you can the expanse of the bay is just there, and it goes all the way across to if you wanted to take the King's Guide walk across, it yeah. goes all the way across. And to amazing the sunsets. Yeah. <laughs> Good now, um, but it's just it's just one of them. At the moments, it was a labour of love. Yeah. Well, actually, tough that. love. And is it going to work? But because of my knowledge of the area and the people that I know who live in Hesbank and Morecambe, yeah. it was a no-brainer. Yeah. Absolute and no-brainer. And lots of support. Loads of good support yeah. from, uh, from, well, obviously family, but from lots of locals. So my next question is, what, would you, say, what would you say is your most significant achievement or contribution in your career, but also in your personal life, unless they're kind of the same? My <laughs> personal contribution is hospitality in this area without a shadow of doubt, it's in my veins, it's in my blood. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't do anything else. I can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah. That's the bottom line. If I lost everything, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> but um, to it's one of them where, yeah, yeah. The, the most important contribution is, it, is setting up this because we live in a, a beautiful part of the country mm-hmm. with lots of great people. And just being there mm. for people, yeah. you know, opening the doors at 12 o'clock, that's the best feeling ever. Yeah, the hours are long. Near the uh, but crossing along the yeah. yes, I absolutely adore it. And that is, that's the bottom line. I was I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, yeah. The best contribution we had was when we won that award. So do you say that's your biggest achievement so far? Actually, I, I won one in a previous life. Explain the award, because it was happening at the time of this interview. Yeah, so Gaz had no idea, did he, that he'd got the award until suddenly he got noti- noticed that it was in the top five pubs in the UK? Yeah, so they have camera regional awards and um, the Crossing won uh, branch of the... Uh, for Loonsdale branch, they won pub of the year, yeah. but they were also seeded, I believe, for top ten, top yeah. five, something yeah, I think like it was that. Top five. And that was happening yeah. right now, and it yeah, was so exciting. it was amazing, and it was quite, um, it was quite emotional as well. I yeah. remember when we we just popped our heads in and when we were walking Sydney down to the coast, and he said, "He's like, come in, this come is in. what's happening right here, right now." <laughs> yeah. And it was, he was like, "Well, up, it was amazing." Yeah. <laughs> One waits probably a year at the Albion and Arnside, and that was pretty damn special. Yeah. But that was run with myself and uh, another couple. But this, me, personally, yeah. it is, it was huge. Yeah. Because I had no idea. Yeah. No one told me. No pre-warning, you might no. be in the running. <laughs> but then it carries on. Yeah. We had 
two weeks ago, we had a couple who runs uh, two micros in Bolton. He said, you do know you're in the top five in the UK. There you go, yeah. And I went, what? I have no idea. <laughs> and he said, well, they're coming on Wednesday. <laughs> That's the only reason you knew. <laughs> and it's like, right. You can't predict When you that. win that, the, the Loonsdale branch, mm -hmm. you get put through to the Northwest. Right. And then if you do well in that, you get through to the UK. So then you, you've gone all the way through. Just straight to the top. <laughs> straight to the top. And but I've not heard any from back often, but they did come. Yeah. Yeah. And we're well impressed. Five pints each. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't, you they know, didn't just go and that's it. See you later. <laughs> they enjoyed themselves. They enjoyed they, themselves. They did. Well, that's the thing. You but will, if we do, we do. But if we don't, we don't. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing for me was was that the biggest thing was opening without shadow doubt. What challenges or obstacles have you faced and how did you overcome them? I think the, the, the hardest time was when we obviously, like every business, was forced to shut down during mm. COVID. That mm. was a tough one. And given that the government stuck to their word and helped us with grants, and they did, without that support, we'd have a bit of an issue. But what we did during both lockdowns was we did a delivery service to the local areas in the two pint containers. So I took orders over my phone and my dad did all the delivering. You never would have imagined that could be a thing, would you? It definitely worked. Yeah. And we decided to continue with the containers because if people are in the, in the car mm. and just want a pint but want some more yeah. and being sensible, yeah. We take a two pint yeah, container yeah, away, take uh, it away of their choice. Yeah. But then we did that, and then the government said that we could do outside seating, mm. but no one could come in. So it's like, right, okay. So we just put a table up on that mat there. People would just come to the door and order and just... a pint, and you just put it there and walk away. <laughs> so that was the most challenging thing. Yeah. And to come through that, like every business has, because let's be honest, some bad boys, big boys, have lost it, mm -hmm. where they weren't really prepared yeah. for that carrying out. To pivot and diversify. Yep. And, not yeah. prepared at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just thinking about our experience, it, it wasn't here, but we had an idea for a business, yeah. um, for coffee roasting business that was based around one thing, and we had to totally pivot. Yeah, um, with the changing rules and, yeah, and also, just trying to figure out what would work and what wouldn't work and then give it a go and hope for the best. Yeah, so and the idea of these two, two pints or two litres, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly he had an idea, he gave it a go and he saw if it worked. And it sounds like it did work for a period of time as well. It's yeah. really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, and hospitality on the whole is a, an industry that's really overlooked. Mm. But it's one of the most important ones. Everyone wants to go to the pub. Yeah. Everyone wants to go out for a meal. Everyone wants to stay in a hotel. Yeah. You know, with all the, the stuff with uh, the strikes and stuff that are going on and at the moment, I get it. Mm. I get it. People want better pay. Yeah. But so we, they're... hospitality, definitely pay the poorest wage yeah. there is going. Yeah. I pay over the living wage with the guys, Andrew, Liz, yeah. Charlotte, because the, the, the key to the business. Yeah, yeah. Without a shadow out. You know, Liz has had... God, so much experience, it's unbelievable. She's run Weatherspoons, three pubs in Lancaster, personal license holder. It's just, she's a fantastic asset, and so is Andrew, who's, you know, who's been a friend of mine for 10 years yeah. on side of Blyde. Travels from on side every, well, not every day, but yeah. to get here. Yeah. Charlotte lives in the village, so we employ local, yeah, right. which is a huge thing, actually. Yeah. Actually, a huge thing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, so what would you say Ooh. motivates you or inspires you to do this? People, simple. Mm. The, the people we get in here, as you guys know mm. from your own experiences, they're just lovely people. Yeah. Everyone asks, how's your mum and dad? Yeah. You know, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Everyone asks. And I just think, and that, that's a basis of where where we are really uh, yeah. you know Morecambe's uh, uh, and certainly Hess Bank is well, yeah okay, it's an affluent you know it's an affluent area it's a big area yeah. money wise yeah. but that's we like you say we get people from all over mm -hmm. all over and we're blessed to have seven big caravan sites by us so the tourists become your regulars every single weekend yeah. 
without a shadow of a doubt. And you get to see the same ones come up again and uh, again. Uh, every single time. Because yeah. the sight fees, they're going <laughs> to... It's even that, they're chucking it all about it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I suppose one of my questions was, go on, go on. what do you love most about living here in Morecambe Bay? Well, the vista is spectacular. You know, we live on I agree. the biggest <laughs> bay in the country, in England, anyway. It's a thing that changes every single day. It's yeah. never the same. You know, I've done the cross bay walk yeah, four day. times. <laughs> yeah. From this shoreline, you don't do them anymore, you're just doing from our side now. Just on the shore here, there's a stone jetty that's yeah. just been revealed. Yeah. Amazing, yeah, hasn't been seen for 30 years and that's yeah that stone jetty i mean obviously any coastal area is like beautiful in its own right but the way that the area changes constantly uh-huh. talking a little bit about getting outdoors and reconnecting and all that kind of stuff you know people have this space that they can go to mm-hmm. but then beyond that is the bay is the sunset is the walks is the jetty that's revealed is the wildlife the birds like Clearly, the location where it is, Mm -hmm. it suits it for, obviously, dog walkers, but people that come on the caravans. It's just, it's not just happens to be there, you know, it it really, yeah. It's changing all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a good spot. Shooting in the sand. (laughs) It's just... It's so cool. It is cool. But as I was saying to you about doing this kind of thing, speak to the Coast Guards. They're the the heroes, because... Like say, I mentioned the tourists and stuff like that. I know how dangerous that is out there. Sinking sand. (laughs) You don't want to be in that situation. I mean, I did a bit of work, voluntary work, for Mm on-site Coast Guard. And you had to answer maybe three calls a year. Mm -hmm. But because I was the landlord, it wasn't that easy. On a Saturday night at eight o'clock, yeah, yeah, I'm on my way. (laughs) People's knowledge that don't know that much about the sands is probably the most treacherous yeah. sands in the country. So it's beautiful, but deadly. <laughs> beautiful, but deadly. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just, the, the vista is the one, the one for me. The one thing I don't like, trains. I'm going, I, I can't help it, but I, I tell you Can now, you I've lost two pictures, one mirror, <laughs> through vibrations. You picked it's, a good spot. <laughs> yeah, and a spot to call home. <laughs> I always used to swear when, when uh, I'd lived in Arnside that I'd never live above the shop again, ever. No, that didn't really work out. <laughs> so I never live above the shop. Yeah. You can never get away. But luckily my parents live in Bear, so it's like yeah. a holiday home. You can so just I just go, just go. Oh. What are your long-term goals or aspirations? Okay, that's an interesting one. Mm. Obviously, keep driving this business forwards. This is this is the key. Yeah. There's a few opportunities that have, have come up recently, uh, maybe to expand. But the key is definitely here and looking after the customers that are supporters from day dot yeah. and new customers. Yeah. I'd love this building. I wake up, I can't wait to get downstairs. Mm. That's the best thing ever, yeah. So who else has a job like that? Yeah. It's rare, definitely, yeah. So, but yeah, going forward, yeah, maybe. Um, like you say, there's been a couple of things offered in the pipeline. The original idea was the, the signal box. Ah. So I put in an offer to turn it into a brewery under, underneath, do my own beer, yeah. which I have done in the past, but using a local brewery who's given up space for me. And bringing barrels across the crossing to the crossing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Um, and then the top, I was going to turn into a, a little bit more of a bar. Not six hand poles, but three, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. But then do a, a, a balcony with the vista of the bay. Rejected. Yeah, Rejected. the goal, it doesn't stop here. Yeah. But this is, this is the heart. Yeah. What's something that you wish more people knew or understood about this line of work? The commitment is definitely a, a, a massive, massive thing. People skills. You, 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 you definitely need people skills. We all get grumpy sometimes, but it's having that quiet moment in the cellar just to get some composure and come back up smiling again. <laughs> That's my happy place, is the cellar. I sit on a barrel and go, God. <laughs> but it, it very Picture. rarely, very rarely <laughs> happens to me. You know, it, I think people skills are, in hospitality, yeah. are definitely the key. Knowledge of the products, the beer and stuff like that, I mean, bless Charlotte, she's only 18 years of age. 
and we make it taste the beers every time she comes I in. Can and it is that facial expression. Oh, that'd be me. <laughs> oh, to eventually like it. <laughs> She's looking for the blue wicked in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> she is, but she will like it. But Liz is knowledge. She likes a beer. Andrew likes a beer. I love a beer. <laughs> you need to put that over. Mm-hmm. It, you're the salesperson. Yeah. If you don't know what you're selling, then it, there's no point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Yeah. It makes me think about coffee. Yeah, there's definitely some like synergy there between yeah. beer and coffee. I mean, the two things kind of are similar vibes anyway, especially yeah, they coffee. Yeah, complement each other. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they kind of all the different flavour notes that you can get, and the different stories of where the beers come from versus like where the coffees come from. Yeah, the, the, it kind of it's very similar. Yeah, and yeah. you have to be so passionate about about the products. Yeah. I mean, we have a bunch of different lines so we have to really care about it yeah. and care how it tastes it's the taste that's yeah. the most important but like Gaz said it's also the service that goes along with it it's yeah. the it's the atmosphere that you create it's the people wanting to stay longer and conversations happen and, yeah. and the community that's built it, it it's all it all ties together yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we already sort of talked about this question a bit but okay how do you maintain a work-life balance I don't. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, I kind of do. Um, I have two days, well, two days off a week, which are generally Wednesday and Thursday, but I know I'll be down here in the morning. I know I'll be down here Thursday morning. I, I try to get out of Dodge because with your colleagues, you feel like you, you're in the way. You're interfering in Let what is their it. shift. Let them do it. Yeah, yeah. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to follow in your footsteps? Well, crack on, head down, work hard, get your, get your personal licence, do a recce round recce. everywhere there is possible known to man to see what other people are doing mm-hmm. and take knowledge from those people to drive your ideas forward mm-hmm. uh, without a shadow of doubt. That's what we did. We went everywhere. Yeah. Mm. I mean everywhere. <laughs> and it's keeping... If you do get to that stage, it's keeping your suppliers close to you. Mm-hmm. you. You know, the people who look after you with the beer, yeah. wine, yeah. spirits, whatever, and having a relationship with them. Yeah. And then they will go over and bend over backwards for you yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Um, and I've been lucky enough after 26 years <laughs> to have a, a few contacts yeah. over the time, and they've helped us out immensely. So I just think that's going forward. Just just follow your dreams, uh, you know. Oh, a micropub that. now, we're lucky to have six good friends, and we call them friends, not rivals, in this area. Mm-hmm. And they all do very successful, but they all offer something very different, i.e. opening times, mm-hmm. and choice of beer, obviously. Yeah. This is the way forward for hospitality, for pubs. Yeah. People don't want to go and be chased around by a five-year-old Screaming. Screaming. <laughs> it's true. Well, it, it's true, because yeah. you guys come down here, you enjoy it. Yeah, everybody enjoys it. And, yeah. you know, and you can see the atmosphere, the smile on people's faces. Yeah. Okay, we have our quiet dates, but they're not very often. <laughs> yeah. So... Is that a trade? It's just a real <laughs> passion for me, this. And it's the best decision I've ever made. That's amazing. Well done, Gaz. (laughs) He's got a voice for radio, (laughs) face for TV. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like um, what he's built is a product of him. Yeah, it's It's, an extension of himself. Yeah, well, he describes it as that it's his living room. Yeah, and that's and that's that's what you feel as as soon as you get it going. And I think that's so important because there's no point creating something that looks swish and fancy and got all you know. It might have all the bells and whistles, but if it hasn't got the heart and soul, then you walk in and it's it just doesn't work. If there's not a reason for that, because all all of that is great, but you can feel the personality at at the crossing. Yeah, and I feel like that's something that we really care about. So with the new space that we're opening literally up the road from the crossing, a big part of that will be that heart and soul that, that you feel when you walk in through the door. Yeah, that people have been getting to know about us over the last yeah. year or so. and the kind of stories of the people, I guess, obviously, the, where the coffees come from and that kind of farm to cup, but not just that, it's the community of Morecambe Bay. Yeah. It's the fact that these, these 
these places can bring people together. Yeah, Gaz just touched on that at, at the end yeah. with, about collaboration with, with, uh, with other pubs. And yeah. in the same way, it's cross-collaboration between businesses and initiatives. Exactly. We're not all little islands trying no, to fight for, for our own... working together yeah, precisely. Is, is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so, really glad we got to know Gaz, and obviously having these conversations with him meant that we we really we've really got to know him really well, and yeah, just just very impressed at what he's done and since 2017, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I very much recommend that if you are passing through, yeah. you live local, pop in. Go it's and check a destination it out. worth visiting anyway. Yeah. Come off the motorway and, yeah. and head over to the crossing. Yeah, and go for sunset because it the best sunsets you'll ever see. And bring your dog. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Fuel in the Bowl podcast. We are your hosts, Susie and Alex Carrington of Carrington's Coffee Co. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.